Hey everybody, welcome back to Investment Honey, where we talk about various crypto browsers. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'm not your financial advisor. I, may, I do not provide financial advice on the channel, and I don't even encourage you to invest. But what I am going to do is share with you my personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So we are looking at Sports Mania. I do like the animation in the background here. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but before we get going, I do want to let you know that if you are interested in supporting the channel, um, you know we do provide a way for you to go ahead and do that in the description. So just look for the uh, support the channel section there. So this project does have a fair launch that's going to be coming up. So we're going to go ahead and head straight on over there first. And we can see that uh, the fair launch is going to be coming up in just a couple of days, well, a little over two days. And then we see we've got uh, some badges here, Seifu Audit KYC. And uh, always keep in mind, you know, just because we see the Seifu badge doesn't necessarily mean that it's an indication of a project's potential success, you know, in the future. It's just another piece of information to consider, you know, as you um, put together a, an assessment and evaluation, you know, on the project that you're taking a look at. You know, so again, you know, all, all things associated with the project, they're just, you know, more things to go ahead and take a look at and, and you know, build into consideration, you know, for whether uh, it's a project that you may think about leaning into or not. And obviously on this channel, we don't even encourage you to invest, but again, just keep that in mind. So we see that, uh, again, beyond the badges, I do want to talk about the audit that it did pass with no high or medium severity issues. While the team's not photodox, you know, again, they do have that certificate of KYC as evidenced by the badge. And then we also see, according to their description, that Sports Mini is a decentralized sports prediction platform, right? So uh, built on the BNB chain, predicting scores of real uh, sports matches and sports legend NFTs, okay? Uh, some of the features, predicting win, 2 to 100x, CMC, CG, and uh, centralized exchange listings. I'd be curious to know exactly what listings. And then we see staking, audited KYC, and Seifu, utility ready to launch, ILP and team tokens are launched. You know, so it's always good to see, hopefully multi-sig, backed by sports celebrities. All right, so moving forward, we see that we've got a soft cap of 50 BNB and liquidity lockup time of 365 days after the pool ends. Concern here in regards to the 7%, you know, tokens unlocked, you know, so the team could always weigh in on that as to why. Always want to know why we've got tokens unlocked, you know, anytime we look at any kind of token metrics. All right, so moving on over to the documentation. So we get a number of different things, you know, over here to take a look at. Start with their tokenomics, you know, so uh, we see here that there's a 9% tax on every buy and sell. And that buy and sell tax is going to be split in the following. 4% going to marketing, 2% automatic added, automatically being added to the liquidity pool, and 3% allocated to the lottery prize pool wallet. All right, let's take a look at the roadmap. So... You see here, they got four different uh, phases to their roadmap. I do like the fact that they do indicate time frames, as are always helpful to have, as I mentioned on other roadmaps that we've taken a look at. So we can see here that we've got, you know, website development, utility development, white paper release, Safe Food, smart contract deployment, Coinscope audit and KYC, social setup on their Telegram, Twitter, Discord, and Instagram. Pre-launch marketing campaign, pink sale fair launch, pancake swap listing, and release of sports prediction platform. Okay. Now looking at phase two, which is going to be, oops, I'm trying to highlight that, which will be Q4 of this year. So basically we're taking, you know, from what, uh, right after they go ahead and they finish that uh, fair launch, you know, then we're obviously going to be going into the, 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 the launch on pancake. And then again, this is going to be what's going to finish us out, you know, this year. CMC and CoinGecko listings. Now, obviously, as you've mentioned, or for those of you that are following me, um, or have followed me for quite some time, you guys know how I feel about, you know, indicating that it's a CMC or a CoinGecko listing because, again, you can't control when you get listed. You know, I mean, it could take you days, weeks, or months, you know, after you submit your application you guys, to go ahead and get listed. So, why go ahead and say that you're listing? Because I, mean, I just think it tends to be, you know. Um, misleading to anybody taking a look, you know, at, um, you know, at your roadmap, you know, when you're saying this is when you're going to list, and the reality is you actually might not get listed when you say you're going to list. So, all right, post launch marketing, uh, YouTube influencer marketing, and, you know, I am not one of the influencers. I'm just going ahead, and this is a project that came across, and I said, you know, hey, let's go ahead and let's do it on the channel. So, um, but anyway, sports celebrity promotions, 
Release of Football Legends NFTs, First Centralized Exchange Listing, 2,000 Token Holders. You guys know that when it comes down to three things that all projects want that I never want to see on a roadmap is your token holders, your market cap aspirations, and, you know, how many people, you know, are, um, what is it, that, what's, the, what's the third one, uh, are in your community, okay? So, those are three things that every Every project literally goes after, you know, in terms of wanting to grow, right? Community, token holders, and market cap. So why go ahead and put them on a roadmap? I just don't understand it, okay? It takes up space that you could be putting something else that actually matters, you know, on your roadmap. And it's not about, I'm not trying to disrespect the team or the project or any project where I go ahead and leave this kind of feedback. But at the end of the day, you literally don't need it there. You just don't. <clears throat> this makes this section of the roadmap actually look like there's more going on. Then there really is. I mean, it takes up like what four spots, right? <laughs> I mean, so we got two thousand token holders, five million market cap, ten million market cap, five thousand holders, four spots in this in this phase. It, it it's it's not telling you anything. As a token holder, I don't even care about that. Okay, if I were to go ahead and um, take a look at this at this roadmap, I don't care about your aspirations to grow your holder account and your market cap. You know, I just don't, you know, so, and that's just me sharing with you my own personal opinion. And because again, it does look like you're just bloating, you know, fluffing this thing up, you know, so you don't need it. All right. So anyway, moving forward, that's my little rant on that. Uh, release of 2022 Qatar FIFA World Cup NFTs and cent second centralized exchange listing. Even on the centralized exchange listings, you got your first one and your second one here, right? Is this going to be what what tier of centralized exchange is it, and what tier is of, ex, of centralized exchange is this one? At the end of the day, you could just consolidate this and just mention centralized exchange listing, okay? Because the likelihood that you're going to get two of them in the same, you know, phase, I don't know. I mean, maybe you might, but again, I think it's kind of bold to say that you're going to get two, okay? And if so, which ones are you going for? I think that's interesting to highlight as well uh, when it comes down to indicating that you're going after centralized exchange listings. All right, moving on. Phase three. Okay, so we see phase three, Q1 of next year, more marketing and partnerships. Here's my thing about marketing. Once you've indicated marketing once on roadmap, you never have to say it again. And the reason why is because you never stop marketing once you launch a token. Even, even pre-launch, you're still marketing. You, I've never known a token to, I don't care if they were alive for 10 minutes, or they were alive, you know, for, for two or three years. You never stop trying to market your token. So you don't have to continue to mention marketing, you know, on your roadmap. So, all right. And here's another example of, again, just bloating this roadmap. We got token holders again. We got more centralized exchange listings again. We got 50 million market cap, you know, here more in stuff in regards to market cap. That's three things that you don't need on this, in this phase of this roadmap. So... Again, just my feedback, not trying to go ahead and pour cold water on the team or anything, but again, you don't need it. So uh, we see here release of Basketball Legends NFTs and more sports celebrity promotions here in Phase 4. Good grief, get rid of this because you don't need it. Okay, more Sports Legends NFT um, here. You don't need this because you already mentioned it here. In partnerships and centralized exchange listings, you know, as a matter of fact, you really don't even need phase four, as far as I'm concerned, because the only thing that you got going on here that we really haven't seen before is this first item here, release of tennis and cricket legend NFTs. The rest of it, it's just repeating yourself. So unless you've got something else, you know, and, and if you look, here's some here, here, here's what I think. If you're trying to extend your roadmap, then what you do is you go ahead and you cut it off here at 2020-22 or 2022 okay and just call it your 2022 roadmap and then at the end of the 2022 roadmap just state that you're expanding your roadmap and then you come out at the end of 2022 with your 2023 roadmap so what that does in the meantime it gives you time to go ahead and think about putting some substantive you know things on your roadmap that are going to mean something and hold value to the holders Instead of trying so hard to extend the roadmap with stuff that you're just repeating. 
Okay, so that's 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 real feedback for you right there. All right, um, especially if the team is coming across this video. All right, we're going to go ahead and head back on over to the main page. Okay, so here we go. A sports prediction platform using blockchain tech to to 100x winnings. Okay, so we see some links up here in the navigation bar. Predict to win button. We see audited and KYC. You know by Cyberscope. We get some about information in regards to the token, and then we get some information on the sports legend NFT. Okay, so the first collection to be released, you know, is going to be the football legend NFTs. Second collection to be released is going to be the basketball ones. Then those will be followed by tennis, critical, or sorry, not critical, tennis, cricket, baseball, rugby, golf. Um, all of these are going to be NFTs. The minting fees for the net, for the NFTs will be used as follows: 30% going to buy back and burn to increase the price for. That makes sense. 35% is lottery to be won by five lucky NFT mentors. Um, and then 35% for centralized exchange listings and more marketing. <clears throat> now, I personally want to go ahead and see more um, people picking up these NFTs to be able to, to win, you know, to win in the lottery. But that's just, again, my own personal opinion. Uh, then they talk to you about how it works, you know, testing your prediction skills, you know, players are able to predict live scores and win. Uh, there's going to be eight modes, you know, players can enter to predict. The 2x, 3x, 4, 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100x modes. Each mode has a different platform fee and winning ratio. There are lots of real-life matches to choose from to predict their scores and win. To win, the player must correctly predict scores out of three out of the four matches in the ticket. Um, what if the player does not get up to three correct predictions? Not to worry. The player gets back the amount in the ticket minus platform fees. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see here. How much can you really make? You know, so we can see that if the ticket amount is 1 BNB, 2x mode played is going to you know, yield 2 BNB. Uh, if the ticket amount here is 1 BNB, um, mode played is going to be the 100x then uh, you know you can win up to 100 bnb now <clears throat> this in itself looks interesting you know that but again i think the problem you're going to run into is that one bnb sounds like a lot to go ahead and spend for a ticket i mean what's one bnb running right now like you know it's still under 300 dollars, you know but either way i mean that's a lot for a ticket you know so when I'm looking at this and, you know, let's say that they're going to run with one BNB as the ticket price, I think that is a high, high cost of entry to play the game. So I think personally you got to go ahead and do something in regards to that. I get it in terms of, you know, hey, um, high ticket amount, you know, means you can win a lot, you know, but you're probably not going to have as much participation when you're looking at the amount to participate being one BNB. I mean, that's just the truth. So um, if it means that maybe you need to go ahead and lower the gain amount, you know, or you tier it, you know, in terms of lower tier people that can't afford to go ahead and do one BNB, they can still go ahead and play, but they're playing at lower tiers, which means lower gains. Um, maybe that's something to go ahead and think about, but I'm just saying, you know, if this is what you're going to run with, one BNB to me, in my personal opinion, sounds like a ton of money to go ahead and get in when you're not going to have a ton of winners. And um, I just don't think a lot of people have it like that to go ahead and throw at a at a lottery. So that's just my own personal opinion. All right, roadmap. And we've already gone ahead and talked, you know, about the roadmap, but uh, the finalization, you know, of my uh, feedback, you know, on the roadmap is going to be. Good. Okay, we see we get timelines here, but however, as I've mentioned in any other project I have done, where you see a roadmap here, you know, on the main page, and then you get roadmap, you know, here, you know, on the or in the white in the documentation. What I'm continuing to advocate is that we need to go ahead and see consistency between the roadmaps. Now, do we see that consistency? We see Q4, Q4, and we see Q4, Q4. So yes, we are seeing the consistency in terms of the timelines, you know, um, between these two roadmaps. Now, as far as my feedback is concerned, I want to see things checked off, 
between the two roadmaps. So yes, it does mean double the work, you know, but it is what it is. Um, I think you want to be able to reach audiences that not only look at your main page roadmap, but those that also look at your roadmap in the white paper. Okay. So we also need to be checking things off, you know, as we complete them. And that applies to both sets of white papers. Okay. Indicating what's in process, what's ongoing, what's pending, et cetera, et cetera. Those things need to be indicated in both roadmaps. And what's going on at the end of your current roadmap? Are you going to be doing a V2 on the roadmap? You know, like I said, you could go ahead and split this up and simply do a 2022 roadmap and a 2023 roadmap. So you're getting rid of this and you're just leaving visitors to your website with this. Do the same in the, in the white paper and that will give you time to go ahead and work on whatever you wanna do for your 2023 roadmap outside of the public view of anybody taking a look at your project if the team is viewing the video and um, listening to the feedback that I am providing regarding the roadmap. All right, so we also see on token distribution, we see 19.2 going to staking rewards, 5% to centralized and decentralized listings, 5% to the team, 24% liquidity pool, 6% private sale, and 40% to public sale. All right, and then we see the taxes, and we've already covered this going to be nine in, nine out and how that's broken down. So that's going to do it for me, you know, on this one. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sports Mania Token. Again, the fair launch is coming up. So you don't have a whole lot of time, but you know, again, you do have some time to definitely make sure that you are taking a look at not only, um, you know, their documentation on this project, you know, but, you know, as I've talked about information gathering, looking at other content creators and seeing what they're saying in regards to the token. Um, because you know on this channel we don't do deep dives we just go ahead and give you some brief analysis and then we put it in your hands to go and do the rest so make sure that you are taking a look at all of the information that you can so that you're operating from an informed position as you consider what your level of participation may be in the project so and obviously we don't encourage you to invest but we do encourage you to get informed so certainly you need to make that your goal as you consider uh, looking into any crypto project, whether it's covered on this channel or not. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, please do so through the tip jar in the description below. And uh, that's going to do it for me on this one. I'll leave the links you know, relevant to the project in the description as I always do. And uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, you all enjoy the day.